you want to take that side? Sure. You want to roll it or? Make that a sexy thing. So, yeah, you, the mice got into the seat here a little bit. So you bought it 30 years ago, you're saying? Yeah. Door number two. <laughs> that live one. <laughs> you just screwed that way. Thing is, I don't want him hanging out in my garage. Jumping into another car, you know? There's his nest. You would think he'd have family. I'm gonna go throw this right outside. Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this bass boat that I grabbed a couple weeks ago that had been sitting for a long period of time. On the past video, we went and pressure washed the bejesus out of it, bleached it, got rid of most of the mold that was in it. You can kind of see in the well down here where the gas tank was removed on the last video, and you can see areas that were bleached and cleaned and then what was hidden behind the tank. That's what the whole thing used to look like. So I'm gonna go address that in a few minutes. Just wanna get you caught up for if you haven't seen part one. And the other thing was the engine, you know, mice were in it, all that kind of stuff. Pressure washed that, got all the, the gunk off of it. Took the plugs out, put oil in each cylinder, spun it over, sounded good. Put a little bit of fuel in each cylinder, put the plugs back in, wires back on, fired, ran it for about you know five seconds till the fuel burned up, punched a bunch of smoke out, but it did run. So that part we know is good. And to close off, the last part was the steering cable was seized up. One of the two steering cables it wasn't actually the cable. It was the, I don't know what you want to call it, the pivot mount going through that locked up on the cable wouldn't allow it to turn. So it put up a bit of a fight to the point where I had to hit it with a press, had the cable out and under the press to press it out of the housing. I had to press that out of there, got that freed up, cleaned up and reassemble and now the steering does work. So we're gonna go continue on in uh, getting the repairs done on this and hopefully get it in the water and operating at some point. I have, do, I have a new water pump for it, picked up a new battery for it, some other uh, nitpick things to move forward. But for now I'm gonna go purge that gas tank area with bleach, clean that out, and I wanna put a gallon of gas in the tank. It had a, the gas it came out of it was like a dark blue, I don't know, Algae, <laughs> it almost looked like. So I'm gonna put some regular gas in it. We're gonna let that kind of splash around the bottom and see if that'll break up any of the, de the debris that is left on it. So give me a second. I'll go get this thing bleached up and pressure washed one more time. And we'll bring it back in. Don't mind the cricket in the corner. I can't find them. It won't go away. Go make up a little concoction. Throw a little dish soap in there. It kind of helps the, the bleach from rinsing away, especially on vertical surfaces. We'll give her see about a, a quart or so. And then probably 50 50. This is I'm using a commercial bleach. It's not what you would use for your laundry. You can use what we use for your laundry too. It's just a little on the weaker side. Pump that up. Let's give her some squirts. We're just going to spray that down. 
without even washing it yet. We'll see how this does for us. I'll bring you back in a few minutes and see what kind of change we get. And it's about a half hour later. You can see you got most of it, but where it's real thick, it's just going to need to get hit with the pressure washer and knock some of the chunks out of the way and give it one more application. But I won't bore you with the pressure washer part. I'll just bring you back when we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, ended up being a good thing we took the gas tank out. You'll be able to see down a little further because that was just sitting in the front of that. Those are the two pumps for the live wells that draw water in and pump it out. But that hole goes directly to the underside of the boat. <laughs> if you were to put this in the water, it would just flood and sink. So, guess we gotta address that. Well, the tank is out. Looks like it's been broken for a while too. That fitting is uh, got a lot of corrosion around it. So to get a, probably a set of them, would be a good idea to do both at the same time. What do you think? And as far as cleaning, it's done pretty good. There's some staining where it was, but most of the mouse caca and mold has been removed. I don't know why they call them impact sockets, they work like crap. I'm try to cut the face of it right off. There you go. Now I'm going to drive it from this side and get a better hit at it. Got her. I need at least one of them. Yeah, that's been broken for a while. There's the, where the break is. Got all rust through the center of it. And there's a fresh break where I cut this off from the other end. You can see the difference. Go on chopping. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. After going to four stores, I found myself one. And it was the last one. And it was not black. So. It's going to be underwater anyway. I don't think anybody's really going to care or see it. It had clear silicone on it that I dug out. Let's go. Uh, let's go line straight up and down. And we'll let that kind of ooze its way in. And we'll do the silicone from the other side too. And we'll run the big nut on it. There we go. They're not even the same size on the outside there. Oh well. On the other side, do the same. Actually, I probably should put it on the on the body, huh? That we're not getting it all on the threads. Just mush that around. Kind of try to pack it in. Make sure you tickle the underneath. Anything's gonna be an improvement over what we had, right? There we go. I can tell you, I'm making a mess. Who's out? Tight, we gotta get it. I think it's more the silicone doing the work than the. I think we'll call that for a win. The hose clamp's still on the hose. Let's see if we can get that on. There. Hopefully, it's the same diameter. Got his eyeball it at the store. Watch me crack it off again. Come on, 
little more. Give me a little more. I think we're up against it. Run that up. That's good. I think that kicks care of all the crap underneath. We can go jump on the gas tank, get that cleaned up, get that reinstalled. We'll start backing our way out of this area and back to the engine. Right, it's been a little while that the gas has been in this tank and what I would walk around and kind of splash it around. Let's see what we get. Yeah. That is all the crap still in the tank. So I'm going to do that again and again until we get clear gas coming out of it. And that way we know, we know we're not going to contaminate the carbs. I'd rather deal with this while it's out than screw up something else. You can see the, the dirt that's still coming out of it too. A little, still a little, a little bit of work ahead of us. Better than with the uh, first round though. And the next round. We're getting there. Should probably put a little bit less in. It's actually looking pretty good. Let's see one more time and we got it. Probably the cheapest solvent I could use to clean the tank. $5 in gas is probably better than $20 of acetone or something. So it's buttoned up the gas tank, getting ready to put a new fuel line and bulb on going out to the motor. And it has a power trim and tilt switch right back there. You reach it from the other side when you're at the motor. And it did not go in the down position. And I do notice a wire is broken off. I'm not saying that's it. That could have broke off from me just fondling around with the gas tank. But let's look into that while we're here. Let's see if you can let's take those two screws off. See if that switch will come up out of the hole and kind of take a look at it. And, We'll fix that wire. If that's not it, we'll kind of probe back there, see if we can find out what is wrong. Well, it's gotta go to one of them. Forget. Maybe it doesn't go to it at all. <laughs> Let's go find out. In weeks some room. So that's the wire that came off. Color coded would be the same as that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where it goes. Let's um let's hook a battery up to it and We'll take a test light. We'll kind of probe around what we got instead of just shoving one arbitrarily on there. If we can't figure it out, that's what we'll do. <laughs> I'm not past uh, doing that, but. I see the end of the test light is grounded out. So you have that's power coming in in the middle. And then one we should be up, one we should be down. So probably the switch, this, that probably powers this side. Yeah, and then down. So power is going out of the switch. The switch is working. For shits and giggles, let's go see if that does anything. Yeah, so that's down. So that's where the wire broke off of the blue one. So that has to get attached to that. And the power down will work again. That was simple, huh? So he was saying the power trim does not work in the front also. I bet you what this wire is right here, I bet you this is the wire that comes from the front switch up by the trolling motor. 
and then just was supposed to go jump to this wire to make it go down. I have a feeling that's kind of maybe what happened. So we'll go hook that up and we'll see if the front works. That'd be nice if both are cured in one little spot like that, huh? Okay, hopefully I did that right. Down. Down works. <clears throat> I think there's a relay on the motor itself that sounds like it's acting up a little bit. Let's go see what the front one does. I'm guessing it's these. Oh yeah. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> well, those are the ones I like. Nice easy fix, just a broken wire on the back of one of them. Made everything else work. All right, let's go on to something else. Drink up my little friend. I definitely think I'm gonna need more than this though. It's only about a gallon in this can. I'm gonna refill it. Uh, Cause I don't even think the, the pickup is even gonna be close. Yeah, the, the hose inside the tank is probably half inch off the bottom. So you don't pick up the crap. So I'm gonna go jaunt to the gas station and we'll throw another six gallons in it. That should be enough to draw up to the engine. Excuse you. Nope, I had another five gallons here. Awesome. Well, that should do it. Look at the fuel line reconnected to the tank with the primer bulb. We'll see if we can get some gas to come up and we'll kind of let it clean itself out for a second. That looks pretty good. I don't waste any. And then I have a little fitting that goes back a little quick connect to go put back on it. And we'll connect that to the carbs. We should probably uh, take the drain screws out of the carbs and we'll let them flush through too. And we'll thread that back on there. That's the quick connect. It goes onto the engine. Let's go plug that fuel line in. I would think the thing has to turn to lock it. There it goes. Yeah. All right. Let's go pop a couple of the, uh, we'll do the bottom one, do a vent screw on the car bowl and we'll do some more primer. We'll see what we get coming out of those. It, the question is whether the carb was the carbs were disconnected when it was last run or if they sat with fuel in them. So we may have to go tear in this whole assembly, take the footballs off, clean the carbs all out, or they might be okay. So before I dig a hole, I'm gonna go pop them off and we'll see we get kind of flushing out of them. Let's get some drain screws out of there. Sometimes you can tell by the, when you pull the screw out, looking by the back of it, it's got a bunch of green crap growing on. You already know the carburetor screwed. Let's see what we get. Actually, the jet is right in there. Good. You can go clean the jets from the outside. That's nice. You don't have to take the balls off to go clean them. That actually looks pretty good, too. Let's get the other two out of there, and we'll go squeeze some fuel through them and let it uh, piss out the bottom of the balls. Nice. I like that. I mean, like, should make motorcycles like that. Probably do. Number two. Number two looks pretty good, too. but not least yeah all of them look nice and clean just a hair a bit of crud on them but whatever's in the fuel lines and whatnot i'm, I'm afraid that's just going to get pushed through so that's why i want to go rinse the, all the fuel lines out and you know what i'm doing you know what i don't have to tell you excuse me mr mercury we're going to need a little urine sample from you it's going somewhere The middle one's flowing, the bottom one's flowing, and the top one's flowing. Good. Let's give that a couple of good. A little bit of crud came out of it. I'll right, we'll stop there and we'll let that go. Let's see what we got. Looks like actually a little bit of water. Good thing we did it. I don't know if you can see it all oh, right there on, on that side. That's water. I'm going to go dump that out and do it again to make sure that we don't get any more of that because that's going to screw us if that's in there. Actually, what I thought is water, like if you look, if I run it over there, you can see it. The little puddle down below looks like water. <laughs> Oops. 
<laughs> just had two bowls. That would do it. And I gave it an optical illusion, didn't it? Still gonna flush it one more time. I think we're good. That looks pretty clean. Probably just a little bit of dirt that washed off the outside of the carburetors too. Yeah, one more time. Good enough. Set the linkage claim back so we can get those screws out. There we go. We got some one size fits all battery hold down straps. Got the good kind, the black ones. Don't disintegrate in the sun. I'm gonna say we are going to need two of those to make it around. Let's go leave it like that. And we'll throw ourselves a brand new battery in. Imagine that. Going for the big box. And give me a few minutes, we'll get all that wired up and get some water underneath that motor. That's all buttoned up. I got to get a, what's called a battery box, and that would enclose the battery and has a lid that goes over the top of it and essentially keeps things from splashing on it and getting access to it, spark, that kind of thing, protects it. And I can mount that box and support it a little bit better, probably to the gunnel and maybe the floor, and then we'll set the battery down inside that. But for now, we got a tie wrap. Make sure we got electric. Give it a quick bump. Yep. Tight, please. just enough. That's probably going to take about 10-15 minutes to fill up. So a couple things I want to watch is the oil tank. I know we put some oil in it so it should have oil injection working for the motor but this should fill up from the reserve tank that is down here. That one's hooked up so hopefully that sends a signal and you know the engine has to be running because it works off of vacuum pressure or vacuum actually pressure to push the oil up into this tank and fill this tank. And again, this has a float that tells it when to work and not to work. So we'll keep an eye on that. Everything else is pretty good. The only thing we had for chomps for mice was right there, but I don't think they got into, you know, actually it looks like somebody repaired that already, huh? That's probably old and he fixed it last time. I think we're good to go. A few more minutes to go. We can actually prime the fuel up, fill those float balls. Make sure we see the fuel filter filling. I was going to replace those fuel lines, weren't? Wasn't I? Slacker. Yeah. I need to address them before we leave. Now on these, there's I call it a tattletale. There's a stream of water that comes out of the side of the engine somewhere. I'm not sure where it is on this one. And it just lets you know if the water pump is working. So the water circulates, it draws in from the bottom. I believe it draws in right from here. It draws in from the bottom, has an impeller down there that spins. It pushes water up through the cylinders around and exits back down and comes out with the prop and the exhaust is where it exits out under the water. But you can't tell if it's flowing or not. So usually there's a hole somewhere that is... A little piece strain will come out from it and just you gives you a visual oh, there it is right there gives you a little visual that you still have water flow coming sometimes they get like a little mud wasp nest in there i'm gonna go give a, a shot of air gun real quick and just give that a little blowout looks pretty good we actually just passed that top hole or else it's gonna suck air that top hole is right there. So about an inch under. Let's give her a whirl. See how she does. I'm gonna try uh, no choke. We're just gonna give her. Hit the choke.
real quick, make sure we still have spark. There was an, when we first tried to go do it on the other video, it was having a problem where very, in the very beginning we didn't have any. Let's go just double check. We're looking right there. Kind of in a minute, isn't it? It's not like all that great. I wonder if it has to see some kind of pressure or oil or I wonder if it's relying on something else to get built up. Everything is hooked up, I think. Eh, let's just go crank her a little bit more, see what we get. RPMs. the door let the mayor in <laughs> to let her run. Let me pop your bed pop you in the stand. Yeah now she's screaming. Being good now. No prostate problems. You hear the heat coming off of it. I was gonna change the water pump. Let's kill it. Oof. Just getting smoky in here. <laughs> I was gonna change the water pump. I got a new one for it. I forget which one it is. I got a couple of different outboards I grabbed them for. One of those two, I think it's this one. It's the correct one with the gaskets, I'm not sure. Especially after they've been sitting for so long. Water's not terribly dirty. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, let her fire up for a little bit. Again, I wanna see if that oil tank 
fills up. I don't know if it's a slow trickle that it does it or it's fairly quick. I just don't know. Now that the door's open, I'm gonna let her run for a few minutes. I'm gonna add some more water to it probably. See how she restarts. Gotta give her some gas. <laughs> I don't dare to put it in gear. We probably should. Let's just quickly bump it in gear just to make sure it's going to dump the water everywhere. Hold on, let me pop you in the stand. <laughs> Starting to wash the floor. Now we gotta shut her down. The water's too low to be underneath the fins. I gotta go fill her back up. <laughs> yep, the floor is definitely gonna be clean. Even quieter because that's exposed and that wouldn't be exposed normally. I'd be underwater. Tack works. Charging system. Fuel's not reading. Might not work. Trim. I don't know what the trim's planning on doing. Give a quick little look inside here. Hey, it looks good. It runs nice. The water is pretty deep. <laughs> okay. Well, that one works. Look at this little guy. I'm not sure where it plugs into. Let me go plug them in. Possibly not have power going to it. The wires are going a little iffy. Okay. This one's saying I don't know how many. You got 15 feet of water? I think it's lying. 
to the light. Three feet of water. Two feet of water. I wonder if it's just shooting at the floor, picking up the floor. Probably. Maybe water doesn't matter. Find out. Cooking that garbage can. Soup! Yeah, that's not going up any. Is this something or is that just a, a vent? There's this hose that goes down to the oil tank. That's locked on. I don't see it having a, there's no primer bulb on it. That doesn't look like it was ever crimped onto anything. Ah, you know what? I get the bilge pump on. <laughs> like, what's that noise? Hmm. Yeah, so we gotta figure out why or how that works. So what is the feed? Oh, I think it just comes off the crankcase. Like, yeah, right there. Would pressurize. I wonder if the tank is not making pressure. What well, if the caps aren't tight, right? That cap is tight. It's got a vent on it. No. Let's see if we get any pressure out of it. Hmm. Yeah. A little, it, it puffs air out a little. I'm gonna try resetting that to a different angle. Try it again. So that's gotta be sealed. If there's any leaking, it's gonna pump air into it, but it's not gonna push any air out the other line. while for it to get all charge into that tank. Maybe that's just a 
as fast as it goes. Yeah, I need some air. <laughs> well guys, I think that's a success for this one, huh? She seems to run good, goes in gear, everything seems like it's functioning. I don't know about charging system and that kind of thing I didn't look into, but uh, maybe we'll have that on the next video. We've got a couple more things to go knock out. I may or may do may or may not do a water pump. We'll kind of look into the trailer real quick, give it a, a quick once over. The electric trolling motor we still have to look into, stuff like that. So we've got a couple things to still iron out, plus I have to go get it registered and then we can go dunk her in the water and see how she does. But for this one, I think that's it. I think we're going to tap out. I'm happy. She purrs like a kitten. Seems like it's uh, survived the uh, 10 years of uh, sitting through the weather fairly unscathed, other than a little bit of beat upness on the seat. <laughs> Alright, guys, with that, I'm going to go get some air. I'm going to go for a ride. You know, thank you all for hanging out with me, doing a little bit of fun with uh, forgotten stuff, so to speak. Till the next one. I'll see you. Bye. Hey, nothing a leaf blower couldn't fix. Well, got most of it anyway. And threw the chairs in it. Had to go see it with the chairs. <laughs>